So watching the developments in Alberta and B.C. from their perspective uh, here in Ottawa on Parliament Hill, three members of Parliament in the thick of the debate around energy, the environment and interprovincial relations. Sean Fraser is a Nova Scotia Liberal MP and the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment. John Barlow is an Alberta Conservative MP and the critic for employment and labour for the official opposition. And Peter Julian is a British Columbia New Democrat MP and his party's House Leader and Energy Critic. Welcome to you all, gentlemen. Thank you. Mr. Good Fraser, let me start with you. Uh, the project list is out today from the federal government for the new assessment project. Oil sands projects that are in situ, as we call them, uh, that use steam and less water than open pit bitumen extraction are being left off the list for the new environmental assessment process but in Alberta, but only if Alberta maintains a cap on overall emissions. Why is your government giving those projects in Alberta an exemption? Well, one of the things that we want to do is make sure that we're uh, putting forward uh, a set of rules that ensures good projects can go ahead and that, that bad projects are, are stopped before they proceed. Uh, when we actually look at the uh, the importance of having a, a hard cap on emissions, uh, it demonstrates that we're taking seriously the cumulative impact of emissions on climate change. Uh, we know that uh, most provinces have a robust, robust environmental assessment process, and if we know that there's protections in place to ensure an individual project uh, can consider the environmental consequences, we want to make sure that there's that additional layer of protection against the cumulative impact uh, if that would uh, exceed a reasonable uh, a reasonable figure when it comes but, to emissions. But wasn't the promise to review all energy projects under the new assessment regime based on their impact on climate, not the production method? And since those in situ uh, projects will account for most of any new oil sands development in coming years in Alberta. Uh, why not have a federal review of those? We want to make sure that we're uh, conducting assessments in areas of federal jurisdiction where we know that there's going to be incremental value provided. Uh, when we look at environmental assessment projects uh, or processes that provinces have in place, uh, oftentimes the uh, additional layer of a federal assessment uh, can just add, uh, add uncertainty to a process when in fact what we want to do is making sure that we are providing that incremental value. Uh, by intervening where there's an absence of a hard cap, we know that we're considering the cumulative impact, which most, most provinces don't uh, consider through okay, their I process. Wanna, I want to come back to the whole cap uh, argument in a moment, but sure. Mr. Barlow, let me bring you into the conversation here. How do you, uh, to you, view what's being announced by the government today? No federal environmental reviews of some oil sands projects as long as Jason Kenney keeps the cap on emissions put in place by Rachel Notley. Well, Jason Kenney has, has said that he has no intentions ever at, as of right now to remove that cap. It wasn't in his election uh, platform uh, or his policy. Uh, so I don't think this is, uh, you know, a, a huge, uh, a huge announcement. But uh, I think the big concern is, is the uh, inconsistency in where regulations are going to be imposed and where they're not going to be imposed. And, uh, you know, the inability to expand uh, Alberta's oil sands if we don't have infrastructure to get those products uh, to market uh, and C69 is going through uh, the Senate process right now will ensure uh, long term that there is no additional infrastructure built to uh, to accommodate any growth in Alberta's oil sands. So we're not going to see major investment in the oil sands. We've seen more than 80 billion dollars in capital investment already leave uh, Alberta and Canada to go to other jurisdictions and I want to be clear that these uh, companies and foreign investors are still investing uh, in energy. They're just not investing in okay. Canadian energy. Mr. Julian, what's your view of the federal government's approach here? Uh, well, I think the Liberals have been talking out both sides of their mouth, and, and the Conservatives don't even admit to the impacts of climate change. Any of the Canadians that have been impacted by the massive flooding we've seen over the last few weeks, uh, the Canadians that lost a family member in the killer heat waves last summer, uh, the whole regions of the country devastated by forest fires, the billions of dollars that cost our economy, and the old parties just don't seem to understand that climate change is a reality, and we have to take action. Now, Bill C-69, uh, the NDP offered a whole range of, of uh, amendments, uh, improvements to the bill, which is deeply flawed. Uh, municipalities aren't consulted. It's just one of the many measures that should be put in, and the Liberals have refused that. So it doesn't surprise me, given that the Liberals have have uh, been willing to invest billions of dollars in subsidizing fossil fuel companies. Uh, they were willing to spend up to $15 billion uh, to, as taxpayers' money for the Trans Mountain Pipeline, that they're exempting a whole range of projects as well from any scrutiny on greenhouse gas emissions and hence uh, the impacts that those projects have on right. climate change. All right, Mr. Fraser, the emissions cap in Alberta was part of a, part of a deal Ottawa made to get Alberta to sign on to the pan-Canadian framework on clean growth. And, Climate change, uh, Rachel Notley was part of that, in exchange for the Prime Minister's decision to approve the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion. Now the government owns the pipeline. So what, what happens if Jason Kenney decides, that, and as Mr. Barlow points out, for now he says he's not going to remove uh, the emissions cap, but what if he decides he's not going to be bound by it? Is the Trans Mountain Pipeline still a go? 
Uh, right now, I, I don't want to comment on what uh, a premier of uh, a newly elected premier of a province uh, may or may not do. Uh, but we are we set out a list of rules today when it comes to the uh, the project list on Bill C69 that does require that uh, provinces will have a cap if they want to avoid environmental assessments on major in situ projects. Uh, when it comes to uh, to Trans Mountain, we are, are considering that project actively, as I'm sure you well know. Uh, I think this uh, this process actually, actually highlights some of the shortcomings of the previous Conservative government's plan when it came to environmental assessments. If you don't have rules that people trust in place when projects get underway, it's hard for them to respect the outcome of decisions taken. Right now we're following the advice of the federal court to make sure that we consider the impacts and move forward in the right way. Uh, should we find a path forward? Right, but I guess what I'm getting, you, you don't have, you don't, you don't, you, you, you clearly don't have the same ally on the fight against climate change uh, and the measures you choose to, uh, to want to implement to fight climate change that you had in Rachel Notley that you have now in Jason Kenney. And, uh, are you, is the appetite still as strong to pursue the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion, uh, given where Mr. Kenny is on, on issues such as the carbon tax, and what's the best way to fight climate change? Uh, so the, a lot built into that question. Yeah. Uh, look, there's, uh, if you want to look at our plan uh, on climate change, I'd point you to the pan-Canadian framework, which includes the price on pollution, investments in public transit, phasing out coal, and in fact, over 50 measures. When it oh. comes to the individual project that you've referred to, we want to make sure that we consider the environmental impact of that project in the right way and bring in the voices of Indigenous groups as well uh, to ensure that we can move forward with a project that will get our resources to market without compromising right. the environmental Mr. 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 Barlow, Mr. Barlow, um, uh, you know, our Jason, Jason Kenny and Rachel Notley are not on the same page when it comes to how to fight climate change, I don't think, but they're probably on the same page when it comes to the need to build pipelines. So uh, does the federal government have as good an ally in Jason Kenney as it had, even notwithstanding some of the bumps in the road in the relationship with, with Rachel Notley in Alberta? Well, I think as this this uh, came over the last few months, even with uh, Rachel Notley as Premier, I think it was very clear that the Liberals were selling Alberta a bill of goods. They said, you put an emissions cap, you put a, a carbon tax, we're going to get you uh, access uh, to, to Tidewater with Trans Mountain. Uh, that's obviously not happened. They can talk about, uh, you know, social license and, you know, you do this and we'll make sure that uh, we deliver. That's just has not been the case. They have not been able to build one single inch of uh, the Trans Mountain Pipeline. They cancelled uh, the Northern Gateway Pipeline. They ensured that the regulations made Energy East impossible to build. Uh, so when the Liberal government, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau became uh, government, they ha we had private sector companies were going to build four pipelines in Canada. Right now we have zero. Uh, those private okay. uh, investors have left and the, the Prime Minister has uh, bought a $4.5 billion existing pipeline and Mr. he has not built one inch of new pipeline. Mr. Julian, what's your thinking on this as a, as a British Columbia MP who's uh, uh, clearly not fond of the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion? What do you think? I, I, I don't think it's, it's a good deal for Canadian taxpayers to spend up to $15 billion dollars to export raw bitumen, because we're, we're not talking about uh, jobs in, in upgrading and refining in Canada here. Even if we're talking about a transition plan, we're talking about sh 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 basically exporting raw resources out of the country. And, and Canadians see raw logs, raw minerals, raw bitumen being shipped out of the country. They also see jobs being shipped out. So even from an economic standpoint, it's a bad deal. From an environmental standpoint, given the cost to our economy of the increasing catastrophic events we're seeing linked to climate change, it is foolhardy the direction that Conservatives and Liberals have taken. Mr. Let me stay with you, Mr. Uh, let's finish on this, Mr. Uh, Mr. Julian. Uh, Jason Kenney enacted a law today to cut off British Columbia from Alberta energy supplies. If, he says, BC continues to oppose the Trans Mountain expansion, BC is taking him to court over that. Uh, what do you make of this? Well, I, I'm a former refinery worker, so I'm one of the few members of Parliament that have actually worked in the, in the energy industry. And the, the reality, the, the foolhardiness of Trans Mountain is that uh, that pipeline, if it went through, would shut the last refinery in the Lower Mainland, which is why the refinery workers in Burnaby, British Columbia, the Parkland Refinery, are opposing Trans Mountain, because we're not talking about shi shifting uh, energy products to British Columbia. We're actually talking about exporting raw bitumen overseas to China. And so the, the reality is Trans Mountain doesn't actually provide any energy assets. Wait, but do, to, do, you think to, he's, do you think he's bluffing though about cutting off energy supplies to, to, the, to the lower mainland largely of British Columbia? Well, Trans Mountain would. That's my point. The, 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 what, what, he's, what he's trying right. to do is, is, is basically export raw bitumen. He's not talking about any sort of product that would even allow uh, okay. existing British Columbians to, to tap into Mr. the market. So Mr. it's a foolhardy proposition. Mr. Barlow, how do you feel about Jason Kenney's threat? 
Well, I think what this really comes down to is a lack of leadership from the Prime Minister and the Liberal government. This would never have happened if the Liberal government reinforced the, the, the national jurisdiction, the federal uh, national building of this pipeline. This is what this comes down to, is this inability of this Prime Minister to take a stand on this issue and enforce the fact this is a nation-building project and is in the federal jurisdiction and should be built. And that is what, what has caused this divisiveness and this okay. pitting one province Ms. to get another. Mr. Final, Mr. Fraser, final word to you. Uh, there's going to be a, probably a court fight over this legislation in uh, Alberta. Uh, between BC and Alberta, who's side on? Uh, you know what, I don't take sides and pit one province against another, but what I do find fascinating from the commentary that you heard today, uh, we've got the Conservatives say you're not doing enough, you're getting in the way, and the NDP say you're, you're doing too much. Uh, I find right now we're, we're in the reasonable middle, so to speak, where we're trying our best to protect our environment, uh, reduce emissions, and at the same time get our resources to market in a responsible way. It's going to help create jobs, create jobs in Canada. All right, gentlemen, thank you for your time tonight. We'll speak again. Thank Thanks, you. Peter. Thank you.